To make the hammered ring, you'll need wire. You'll need 16 gauge copper wire. We chose copper because it's malleable and it's easy to get and inexpensive. And 16 gauge is how big it is around. You'll also need a jewelry hammer. You could actually use a regular hammer for this, but we like this little craft hammer. It has a round end and a flat end. And we have a little steel block here. This is what we're gonna hammer on. You definitely need something hard to hammer on, but you could do this on your garage floor if you don't have a steel block. And this is optional, but we like to use a jewelry file just to make sure the ends are smooth. Finally, you'll need a ring mandrel. And this is a necessary item if you're going to make rings because it allows you to size the rings. It has the ring sizes printed on it like a ruler. It's made of heavy steel, so you can hammer on it, and it's gonna help us make the ring. So the first thing we want to do is we want to hammer the cut end of our wire. I cut this just with wire cutters and I'm going to set it down on the steel block. I'm going to use the flat end of the hammer and I'm just going to hammer that out into kind of a flat paddle shape. It only takes a couple of strikes. And you can see it's starting to hammer out flat a little bit. These are going to be the ends of the ring so it's nice to get this into a nice shape. I'm going to turn it over now just to make sure that both sides are hammered. That looks pretty good, but I'm going to give it a couple more strikes. And now you can see it's not round like wire anymore. It's flat on both sides. We're going to repeat that for the other side of the wire. And we'll flip that over. I have the steel block sitting on a mouse pad just to give me a little cushion and that's just a little tip we find that works and it usually keeps this from slipping around too much although I can see it's bouncing a little bit so that looks pretty good and now I have the file this is a jeweler's file it's metal and this is optional but if you feel the end and it feels the least bit pokey you can just give it a couple strokes in each direction just like you're filing your nails just to make sure that it's smooth on the ends there. And ours doesn't feel too sharp, but I just want to show you how it's done just to file that end a little bit. So now we've got our ends done, nice and smooth, and we're ready to shape this into a ring. And to do that, we're going to use the mandrel. I want this ring to end up being somewhere between size six and seven. I'm going to aim for size six. That's my ring finger size. But if I start on six and start hammering the ring, it's going to get bigger and bigger. It's going to end up being a nine. So instead, I'm going to start up here at size three to get my wraps going. And I'm going to lay that paddle end down flat on the mandrel. And I'm going to just wrap the wire around the mandrel. And copper is very soft, so it's pretty easy to wrap it around. And if you didn't want to hammer the ring, you could just wrap it at your size like this and you would be done with your ring. But we want to hammer it. So we did it up here at size three. And then as we hammer it, the hammering is going to stretch the wire out. It's going to get bigger. The ring's going to get bigger. It's going to end up being down here at size six. Move our steel block out of the way. So to hammer it, I'm going to do what we did with the steel block. I'm going to set the mandrel down on the table and I'm just going to start hammering. I want to keep pushing the ring down the mandrel so that it's flat up against the metal. Up here it's roomy and it won't stay in a round shape. If I hit it here it'll become oval shaped. So I'm going to make sure I keep pushing it down the mandrel so it has a round backing behind it. I'm just going to hammer a little bit. And I'm just trying to texture the ring a little. I'm rotating the mandrel as I go. And I'm sliding the ring down a little too, so it's tight on the mandrel. You can see it's starting to slide down. We're at size four now, but I'm going to keep texturing it. Also, these rings are spreading apart a little bit. I'm going to try and keep them together. I'm going to try and squish them together a little bit. So as I hammer, they want to stay more together. 
sometimes when you hit it, you're pushing the wire down the mandrel, separating it from the other rings. So we want to make sure they stay together. It's still pretty soft, so I can still push them back together. Push it down the mandrel a little. I want to hammer that paddle end down that we made. And now I can start to see some texture showing up. And the idea is to get these hammered marks into the metal. You can use the round end of the hammer and it will make even more marks than the flat end. It makes smaller dimples. Just be careful not to hammer your own fingers. And now we're getting down here. We're getting closer to size six. I can try this on now and see if I like the size of it. It's a little small for me because as you can see, it's a size five. So I'm gonna hammer it a little bit more. You could make this bigger than a six. It'll just get thinner and thinner. And now we're a little bit bigger than a six, so that's gonna work for me. That size looks good. And then just to make sure that the ends are together and the rings are together, I'm just going to handle it with my fingers a little bit and push it together. As you work with metal and hammer it, it gets harder and harder. The molecules inside the metal line up more tightly, so it gets harder to push together. But copper is so soft that I can still bend it a little bit. And I can just push those wires together a little bit more so that when I wear it, it's this pretty hammered copper wrap ring. Thank mm -hmm. you.